Hello my friends, welcome back to the jungle. In this video I will give you a quick update over my project lowering the bar, making FPV accessible. This is what's part of the kit and to set everything up you will need a few extra bits and pieces. If you have purchased one of these kits you can use this video as quick tutorial to get everything set up. Let's start with the transmitter. In the current version, no battery is included, so you'll need to provide your own four AA batteries or a two cell LiPo, which will connect over the balance plug. It's possible and really not that hard to configure this radio over the buttons and the screen, but it's a lot quicker if you connect this radio to a computer and drop two configuration files onto this. So to do that use the included cable connected to a computer and then on the radio after turning it on you go menu number three USB and hit enter to activate USB storage mode. Then on your computer a new storage device will pop up with a bunch of folders in there and you will drop one tx.ini onto the root folder and then you will copy one or multiple model files into the model folder. When that's done you can deactivate USB mode and everything will be configured for you. For written instructions and the model and tx files click the link in the video description. After this initial configuration you never need to connect this thing to the computer ever again unless you want to back up or add model files. Next step is to set up the screen receiver. You will need to screw the antennas onto the top and mount it onto a tripod or clamp of your choice. The screen has a standard quarter inch tripod thread at the bottom. If you're powering on this thing for the first time you should go into the menu and adjust a couple of things. Long press the menu button to get into the menu and then short press it to select an option. I recommend to go to volume and then press channel plus until volume is at zero otherwise you hear a lot of static noise when flying FPV. And then you can also change color and contrast in that same menu to your liking. Outside the menu, short pressing the menu button will cycle between the inputs seen up here on the screen. You always want to have this thing set to diversity so it's using both antennas. To find the right channel you can then either press the search button or the channel and band buttons to set it manually. Once you've set it all up you don't have to touch these buttons ever again unless you want to change channels. The only button that I use on a regular base is the on and off button. Turn it back on and well, press a little longer, turn it back on and it will come back with the exact same settings as you've left it. Now there are lots of different ways to charge single cell lithium batteries. This charger here is one of the easiest ways I have found. It's made by SkyRC, the same company that makes these high-tech X4 microchargers. Just branded a little differently, HTRC instead of high-tech. Um, but yeah, they're made by the same company. I have been using a stack of these red chargers for a long time now. They've been doing a great job, however, they only charge the batteries up to 4.2 volts. This charger works exactly the same. It just has a little switch on each channel to select between 4.2 and 4.35 volts. Maximum charging current has been increased to 1.5 amps. You can power this charger either with 12 volts or straight from the grid. 100 to 240 volts. You can use whatever 12 volt source you have. I've made up this little adapter here so I can power 
two of these chargers and connect whatever I currently have with an EC3 plug. When you have batteries connected to the charging port, it will display the individual voltages on the displays. And if you have none connected, it will show the current that you have selected. A safe charging current for lithium batteries is 1C. So these batteries have 255 milliamp. So I'm setting the charger to around 0.25 amp per channel. To start charging, you just long press the button for each channel and then while it's charging it will show you the voltage, the current and the charged capacity here cycling on the display. Each of these channels is working completely independently so you can press all the buttons at the same time and they'll all start charging. LED is red while it's charging and then it beeps and turns green when the charging process is finished. The charger has error messages for disconnection and for under voltage and for reverse polarity. I put a link in the video description to a page with detailed written instructions and a list of error messages. When you have your ground station configured and batteries charging, it's time to put together or set up the model. We will have different versions of the kit available and you will either have to assemble the model yourself or it will be pre-built and pre-configured for you. If you have the unassembled version, you will need to do a little bit of programming on the flight controller. Now, that sounds a lot harder than it is. I will show you exactly what you need to do. Connect a micro USB cable, which is not included in the kit, to a computer running Mac OS or Windows. Then download and start the Betaflight configurator. Follow the instructions to install some drivers, then connect the board and go to the CLI. And the first thing you want to do is type version and look at what it gives you. At this point, you need to decide if you want to update the firmware or if you want to use a configuration file for that specific firmware. If you want to update, the process is very simple. You just select the version you want to have, you click download and then you click flash. This will install the latest firmware onto the flight controller and now you still need to give it some specific settings for this board. You get these settings by clicking the link in the video description and then you just copy them into the CLI here, type save and hit return. This will save the configuration to the board and then you can disconnect and move on. If you ever have problems with the connection between your transmitter and the model, you can connect it back to the computer and then use this status information here to start troubleshooting things. Makes it a whole lot easier. The frames and flight controllers are designed in a way that you can still access the USB port once it's all assembled. What you might want to do before you put the canopy on is pressing this button here, so power it on and then press this button to set your video transmitter to the right channel. Now you can change the channel even if the canopy is installed over your transmitter, but that's kind of a chicken and egg problem because you need to be on the right channel to then put it to a different channel. So yeah, just set it up before you put the canopy on and it will be a little easier. For a channel map and further detailed instructions, you can click the link in the video description. So that's it for this video. As usual, if you have any comments or questions, you may ask them down there in the video comments. We also have the first of these kits available in our Australian warehouse and we will place an order soon to stock them in US and Europe. So if you want to have one of these kits, Guess what? Click the link in the video description. See you over there.